In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful. Hello, everybody. I hope all of you be fine and uh, pass the best times. Uh, today we want to talk about psycholinguistics. Uh, you know that before starting the topic, I want to talk about uh, this uh, term psycholinguistics. As you know, is an interdisciplinary field of study in which the goals are uh, to understand how people acquire language, how people use language to speak and understand one another and also how language is represented and processed in the brain all of these belong to the field of psycholinguistics psycholinguistics is a primarily a subdiscipline of psychology and linguistics uh, be careful in, in one side you have psychology and in other hand you have linguistics but it's also related to developmental psychology cognitive psychology neurolinguistics and speech science all these branches are interrelated in other sense the purpose of this course is to introduce, uh, in fact, um, some uh, central ideas, problems, discoveries in contemporary psycholinguistics. Uh, and specifically in this chapter, we explore the key concept about language that serve to distinguish it from related aspects uh, of human behavior and cognition. Uh, so uh, we identify the basic characteristics of language as a system. You know that language is a system. It means that it means that the language is composed of different parts which uh, work together. Uh, we also provide in this course a brief uh, account of how psycholinguistics emerge as a field. Anyway, I start my own uh, work with uh, this topic. The first topic is creativity of human language. Uh, a good place to begin is uh, by thinking about some of the unique features of human language. Language is a system, as I've talked about it before, uh, that allows people immense creativity. This is not the same creativity of people who write essays, fiction, or poetry. Instead, this is linguistic creativity that is um, commonplace to every person who knows language. What does it mean? Linguistic creativity uh, is a um, crucial part of any kind of language. The creativity of human language is different from communication systems of any other animals in a number of, uh, in fact, respects. Among the animals, we have the communication system, but for human beings, we, do, we talk about a language. We never use the term language for the communi communicative systems uh, which exist between the animals. Uh, for one, speakers of a language, uh, be careful. Uh, for one, as a speaker of any kind of language, 
who can create and understand novel sentences of an entire lifetime. Consider the fact that almost every sentence that a person hears every day is a brand new event not previously experienced. Every sentence every day we hear in fact is a new experience. But we as speakers of language we can understand these new sentences with a very little difficulty. And similarly when we speak people can understand constantly and novel sentences which we produce with no conscious effort. So this is true for every person who speaks or has ever spoken a language. The point is, as I, I will repeat it again, we can extend this observation to every person who uses a sign language to produce a comprehend novel sentences. So, as human speakers, speakers of uh, natural languages, or uh, maybe we speak uh, uh, in a sign language, uh, no, no difference between these two systems, we can understand uh, and produce a very novel sentence uh, in lifetimes without any conscious effort. This remarkable ability to deal with novelty in language is possible because every language consists of a set of principles by which arbitrary elements, for instance, the sounds of a speech, gesture of, uh, of sign language, all of them uh, are combined into the words. The combination of these uh, speech sounds or gesture of sign, uh, sign languages we create a word or any kind of words, which in turn, uh, these uh, words combine together and uh, make sentences. Everyone who knows the language, as a native speaker, knows a relatively small number of principles, a small number of sounds put together to create words, and uh, how, uh, uh, in fact, these uh, words can put together to create a, a more complicated system which is called uh, in fact sentences. Uh, but we know that the point uh, I want to talk about is uh, these words that uh, I, I, I was talk about it, that everyone who knows the language knows a small number of principles and a small number of sounds, uh, she or he put uh, these small numbers together to create words. And uh, a large but a, a finite vocabulary. This finite no knowledge provides the person uh, who knows a language with infinite creativity. Uh, you know that uh, a set of possible sentences for a given language, any kind of language you uh, may consider is infinite. Okay? The set of possible sentences is infinite. Each person during his lifetime can uh, produce a different number of sentences. Everyone who uh, who has ever lived and uh, known a particular language has produced and heard, a, um, in fact, a subset of that infinite set. We haven't enough time to produce this uh, indefinite set of sentences. Uh, we um, actually uh, and usually use a limited set of these uh, uh, sentences. Uh, knowledge of language, uh, in fact, uh, conferred 
uh, upon every person the creativity to produce an infinite number of novel sentences. When that knowledge is shared with others in a given language, community, speakers, hearers, uh, in fact, uh, uh, they are able to produce and understand an indefinitely large number of novel sentences. That is, uh, this is, uh, or that was, uh, one important point I talk about it, that I called it creativity, which is a very, uh, in fact, important features of human language. A second important kind of creativity uh, that human languages has is that uh, we can use language to communicate any things we can think of. Uh, we, uh, we do not use language just for um, uh, communicating with uh, the, our partners. Sometimes uh, we use language in order to uh, not communicate, but uh, in fact uh, communicate in different uh, way uh, that is, uh, I want to uh, talk about whatever I think about or I think of. No other animal's communication system affords uh, its, uh, and in fact, its users, uh, actually, uh, such an unlimited range of um, topics. And animals are not able uh, to talk about their thinking. No, I'm not uh, now. Uh, uh, I don't want to talk about this fact, uh, and I don't want to raise these important questions that whether the animals uh, have got uh, a thinking system or not. Just I want to say, no other systems uh, afford its user with these uh, potentials. And many mammals have a complex uh, set of call and cries but they can communicate only certain kinds of informations. Uh, for instance, whether um, a danger is coming uh, from a ground or in the air, who, and also about who is ready to mate and where food is located, and so forth. So forth. All of these uh, matters are uh, routines and some natural, in fact, matters that the mammals are confronted with. Uh, the philosopher Bernard Russell, uh, as you may know him, Bernard uh, Russell uh, once said, no matter how eloquently a dog may bark, uh, he cannot tell uh, his parents were uh, poor uh, but honest. In fact, uh, Bernard Russells want to say that uh, animals are not able to use language in a way that human beings can use. And uh, another point is language is so flexible, is a flexible system, and it's so flexible that is not only allows people to say anything uh, they can think of, it also allows to use language for a vast uh, array of purposes. Uh, language is used to communicate, is used to interact socially, to entertain, to, and to inform. Uh, these are the main uh, uses of uh, language, which is used for communicating, uh, interacting, uh, entertaining, and informing. All cultures, institutions like schools, uh, communities, governments, and etc. depends upon language to function. Uh, written and audio recorded languages allows people to communicate and convey information. As, uh, as well as interact and entertain across vast spans of space and time. It's uh, probably the case that human dominance of uh, planets has been possible because of the power of human language. 
as a medium for transmitting knowledge. And suppose that uh, we live in a condition in which every person can just think uh, for uh, himself or herself and there is no, uh, no any communication and there is no ways for communicating the ideas between uh, different, uh, different male and females. Uh, the scientists or the, uh, in fact, genuine people may understand some things and if they were not able to communicate and transform the information to the others, this knowledge uh, will be blocked in, uh, in that brain. But uh, by means of language, you can communicate with the other people around the world and you can trans uh, trans uh, transfer, in fact, or uh, 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 it's better to use the term transmit, transmitting this knowledge to the different generation, to uh, the different people all over the world. And uh, so uh, this knowledge, um, can be expanded, can be think deeply by the other people and can be developed later on. So uh, that is why I said because of the power of human language uh, as a medium uh, uh, for transmitting knowledge, we can say that uh, uh, in fact, human uh, human being was uh, was able to conquer the world and go to the um, space or anything else. Uh, the other point I want to talk about the other topic is a language as a distinct f uh, distinct from a speech, from thought, and from communication. This is a topic, language, as distinct from speech, from thought, and from communication. All of these, these the four terms, are specific terms. But now, uh, I want to say that language is primary uh, communication system for human uh, species. In, or, in ordinary mm, circumstances, it's used to convey thoughts through a speech, in ordinary or uh, usually. It's a special system, however, that function independently of a speech, thought, and communication. Because uh, one of the main theme of this book is to identify the unique aspect of human linguistic system. It might be helpful to distinguish between language and the other systems uh, which uh, usually with which language uh, can interact like speech, thought and communication. Uh, before uh, I talk about uh, those other systems let us emphasize that uh, here and throughout this book, our discussions of human language includes the sign language of a deaf, unless explicitly noted. Sign language, you know that, or just uh, is a structured uh, a form of an, an a spoken language and are just as capable of can conveying an unlimited range of topics. Uh, the deaf persons can transmit uh, an unlimited range of topics by means of uh, by means of this uh, in fact uh, language uh, sign language. Sign language also operate under the principles distinct from thought and communication. What differs between sign and a spoken language is the uh, is transmission mode. Uh, you know that um, different mode of transmission, uh, gestural for um, uh, is used. Uh, gestural mode is used in uh, sign language and articulatory phonetic speech uh, is used for. Uh, 
language. Uh, it means that in sign language we use signs in gesture, but in uh, other systems like language we use uh, articulatory and oral phonetic, uh, in fact, apprentice, uh, which is which uh, which is belong to a different mode of speech. Uh, so, now I want to talk about speech. A speech um, uh, ought not to be confused with language. Uh, though a speech is indeed the most frequent uh, speech, is a most frequent mode for transmitting linguistic information. And all of us use the speech or apply the speech. Other modes of transmission include, for example, gesture, which uh, I've talked about it, uh, which is used in sign languages, and graphic representation used in writing. Um, writing is another uh, form of transmission idea. Later in this uh, unit and in this uh, uh, chapter, we will uh, address the difference between the sign uh, and abstract information carried by, uh, carried by that signals that we will demonstrate that producing the perceiving a special signal is possible. Uh, for now, consider the linguistic abilities of parrots. For instance, parrot is a, it's a bird. Uh, please consider the linguistic ability of a parrot and uh, and computers, for instance. Uh, both of them, both a parrot as a bird and computer, can produce a speech that might sound very uh, human-like. Promising new technologies are also able to create a gestural sequence. But uh, you know that this animals and computer-generated speech differ from true human language production in one crucial aspect. What is this crucial uh, respect or uh, in fact pivotal uh, accept here? It's not based on knowledge of language as a finite system that yields an infinite set of possible sentences. Notice in particular that parrot and computer speech will fail to be creative in the sense described before. I mean that the parrot language and the computer based productions are not creative, as creative as human beings language. Uh, I've, I've talked about the creativity uh, some minutes ago. Uh, 